It's taken 22 years to build CCPOA. Every part important. Every piece assembled with precision and care. 22 years of fine tuning, hard work, and a lot of guts. We're CCPOA, and we know what it takes to win. We've never backed down from a challenge, never turned our back on a friend. Every fight has made us stronger. Every race has earned respect. We're CCPOA. We go flat out. It's a clean sweep for the opposition to Governor Schwarzenegger's special election. The Alliance for a Better California representing unions, teachers, nurses, and public safety, however, vows this is just the start of the fight. Last night when he gave his speech, he never apologized. And just like I said last night, we're not going to apologize today. We are a force to be reckoned with, and uh, we will fight. I believe that uh, we were a very essential part of uh, taking on this governor's special election ballots and in defeating them. And I think that uh, showed them uh, our grassroots effort to get our membership out there and get them to the polls. We have a long way to go to reestablish trust with this administration. And it's not just these initiatives. It's been our history that this is an administration that doesn't keep its word. I don't think that uh, this administration is in a position right now to withstand the onslaught of the public scrutiny that's going on without the support of the staff that work for it. Um, out of concern for the way we have seen this department operate um, over the years and having seen no change whatsoever except indications of their developing a plan to make a plan, to create a plan, to talk about a plan after we make a plan, how we're going to do that plan. Our organization developed the first agency-wide strategic plan in January of 2005. Our performance measures reflect that we accomplished approximately 50% of the goals that we established in strategies at that time. I am aware that meeting 50% of your objectives does not get you a passing grade. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even get you a high school diploma. Are we rehabilitated? No. Are we rehabilitated? No. Are we rehabilitated? No. Not yet. Are we rehabilitated? No. Are we making progress? Rod Hickman um, didn't have the mud to stay very long. He uh, let it go early. We expected him to last quite a bit longer, but uh, Jeannie followed suit, and I think... Um, Even quicker. The current secretary, um, I think he, uh, he's come to realize already that um, he needs the workforce's support. The facts are that we have seen Two department secretaries accept and then resign their positions. And most of the appointments to positions in the department are interim and many are vacant. We are under court oversight for medical care, mental health services, and due process with respect to parolee violations and dental care. Robert Sillen, probably a very nice man. He's well intended, wants to uh, help people with respect to medical in California. Um, the problem is, is that he's been given complete and absolute authority to affect change and not worry about the impact on the taxpayers. That is irresponsibility of an enormous proportion. This state needs to challenge the federal government and tell them to get out of our business or pay for it. They're not willing to fund it. They're going to bankrupt this state taking care of inmate health care. We have a serious crisis. I'm in possession of a memo that was sent out um, in, uh, back in October, signed by uh, the director of the Division of Adult Institutions, saying that we believe an imminent substantial threat to the public safety exists requiring immediate action. I mean, if that's not a statement for potential liability of the state of California, I don't know what is. Until somebody's killed, murdered, at the hands of another human being, as soon as this session ends, it gets forgotten once again. Barely over a year ago, we lost an officer. 
A ceremony was held today for Officer Manuel Gonzalez, who now has a street named for him in Chino. John Christopher Blaylock is accused of fatally stabbing Gonzalez at Chino's California Institution for Men one year ago. Blaylock was serving a life sentence at the time of the killing. Gonzalez was a 16-year veteran of the Department of Corrections. He left behind a wife and five children. Nothing has changed at Chino or any other institution. Every day when we go inside these prisons, your life is at risk. Nobody looks at that. Uh, I don't know. I just have to cover each other until they get the, the positions filled. If you can't fill the positions, if you can't recruit the type of people necessary to accomplish the tasks that you're asking them to do, if you don't get them the equipment, if you don't give them the environment that they can accomplish those things, you can put all the best laid plans in the world together and you're still going to lose the battle. The parole policies were interesting. It was sort of the leave a criminal on the street program. It was whatever we do, um, don't send anyone back. We're going to show that our revocation rates are going down and we're doing a good job. Our final goal should not be to merely reduce the number of felons in our state prison system. The goal should be to reduce the number of criminals on our streets that prey upon innocent victims. My sister Katina was murdered. But because of Governor Schwarzenegger's new parole policies, Katina's killer could be back on the street. The governor calls it reform. I call it dangerous. Over 2,500 parole violators remained free last year under the governor's plan. Over 2,000 went on to commit serious new crimes. You promised to stand with victims, Governor. You let us down. Tonight, the governor has called for a special session of the legislature to deal with a problem. In one respect, it's as simple as this. The California prison system was designed for about 100,000 inmates, and as of last week, the total number of inmates in state prisons surpassed 171,000. Speaking today, the governor warned that without changes, the courts may take over the California prison system. I would assume that you would be uh, pleased the governor is calling a special session in that that would mean more prisons and the hiring of more corrections officers. Well, certainly we're happy that the administration is focusing on the crisis that we're facing. But the notion that we're happy to get more prisons, I think we're much like other Californians. We'd rather see that money spent in other ways, but that's just not reality. Yet at the same time, uh, th that does provide more overtime for corrections officers here in California, corrections which in some cases, uh, they can make, what, more than $100,000 a year, given we had, overtime. We had more than 2,000 officers, unfortunately, make over $100,000 last year, but that's time spent in a California prison that they would prefer to spend with their families. And the long and short of it is, is that there are staff that uh, do appreciate overtime, but the vast majority want to go home to their families. This special session, it's an emergency. And I question the validity and the legitimacy of a special session in the final three weeks leading up to the final three months of a very important election when we have been arguing about this for three years. I don't think anything was ever intended to come out of it. I mean, interestingly enough, here we've got a governor with a, a millstone around his neck called prisons. And he hands it off to the legislature into the summer, uh, hoping maybe that some calamity will occur. Um, and then he can say, hey, I tried to fix problems. I handed it off to the legislature without any specifics, without any good legislation, without any real reform. But at the same time, I did try. It's an actor's ploy. Overcrowded, understaffed, violent, California prisons are in meltdown. The governor's response? He cut rehabilitation, officer training, prison safety, now, nine officers a day are being assaulted. When a federal judge threatened to take over California's mismanaged prison system, the governor said, I don't care, he can take it. It's no sweat off my back. That's not a solution, governor. It's a cop-out. What's been interesting about the prison reform plan is it doesn't deal with reform at all. It's a quick fix. As most things are with this administration, they want to move things conveniently and quickly into their rearview mirror, whether it be levees or roads or schools, and certainly prisons, the governor would like it off his plate as quickly as possible. 